Power meters are expensive, and in a previous video I showed you how you could use a lux meter and a conversion factor to calculate PAR so long as you're testing under white light sources. So today I got a new lux meter and I'm going to show you a couple things and talk about a few things and why I like it. So the first thing right off the bat is there's two different meters here, one being a two-handed meter and one being a one-handed meter. So for most situations, I would prefer to use a one-handed meter where it's just attached to the meter itself rather than having to use two hands or trying to you know, hold things like this in one hand. So right off the bat, that's the main difference between these. And there's a couple technical differences as well, although they do test to the same level of 200,000 lux, so they are identical in that matter. But like all lux meters and other meters, they don't necessarily have to be exactly accurate. So in other words, uh, when you're testing lux, say like on this meter or another meter that's identical to this, it may not give you the exact same readout. And that's going to vary between the brands also and probably more so between two different brands than two different meters in the same brand. So I'm going to take a look at a couple things. We're going to show you the uh, numbers on the meters to compare them. And then if you are interested in this meter, I'm going to give you the conversion factor that you need to calculate par. Okay, so now we'll turn these meters on and take a look at a couple things. And the first thing you're going to notice here is one has a lit up LCD screen and the other one just has a non backlit LCD screen. The next thing you notice here is you see how this meter starts off, it uh, maxes out. And that's because you have to set the lux value, or I should say the decimal point, every time that you use this meter to where this one here automatically changes the decimal point. You don't have to go in there and select anything. That's one reason why I like this meter over this one. So another difference between these meters is just an added feature on the Yersiri, and that is a temperature gauge, and it's in Celsius. I do not really know offhand if that actually can change to Fahrenheit for all you people out there who would rather see that, but it does have a temperature gauge in there. I don't know where it actually sits in there, so I'm not sure if holding this in your hand is gonna affect that. Maybe if it's up here in this top part, that doesn't affect it. I don't really think we need to test that here because I'm not using it as a thermometer. Um, also, if you look here, you see the numbers are very different on the screen. So this one here is showing about 4,714 lux. And over here, that's times 10, so that's showing 5,070 lux. So there is a difference between these two meters here, and that's why I'm going to give you the conversion factor for this new one here. One feature that's actually very commonly used on light meters or lux meters is the peak hold button. So if I push the peak hold on the doctor meter, it's going to hold the max output on this screen, the max value that it saw. However, on the doctor meter, if I move this up here, you see that number on the screen? And then move it back down. Now you saw a number above 600, and it was there for a moment, but it did not hold that number. And that's one thing I didn't really like about this doctor meter is the fact that it's uh, it's not very reliable in, uh, with that feature because I've tried to test flashlights that way, um, output of flashlights, and it was giving me some really funky results every time I tried using it. The Usiri, on the other hand, if I push the min-max button, because it also holds a minimum as well, so you see the max button? If I move this up, you're going to see a number on that screen, and it's going to hold it, and it's not going to go down. Do it another time here. See, it's holding that number very well. It's, it's not, it doesn't have a delay like the doctor meter does. So as soon as it sees that high number on the screen, or maybe, maybe even if you didn't see that number, it's still gonna hold that max value and it's gonna keep it on that screen, unlike the doctor meter. So that's not a huge deal, but it is kind of a quality thing. And I look for stuff like that when I purchase products. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the sensor on this little spot on the floor, right in the middle of that. We're gonna look at the reading on the screen. So right now, that is showing uh, 5,220 lux. Now we're gonna compare that to the other meter. All right, so putting this meter on that same exact spot, we got a value of 4,767 lux. And now we're gonna give you the conversion factor so you know what level par that is if you wanna purchase this meter here. Okay, so I've worked out the math, and there's your Siri meter here. It needs a multiplication factor of 0 0.0165. So take that number you see on the screen, multiply by that, and it's going to give you the par value if you were actually using a par meter. And the doctor meter here uses a multiplication factor of 0 0.015. Sounds like a small difference, but it matters more when you get into the higher lux values. So if you're interested in this meter here, this is going to be linked in the video description below, as well as a doctor meter. They're very inexpensive meters. This one here is pretty cheap. 
Um, they are affiliate links, so I do get a tiny commission, but it's not going to cost you anything. So thanks for watching this nice short video. Hope that helps.